Let's go there. So, welcome everybody. Welcome to uh, class six. Uh, this is our fifth class, sixth class now out of the total six classes. And what we're going to do today is we're going to basically bring the other five classes all together, tie everything up together. And what we have here, and I've called it, is a map home. Okay, so I'll be giving each of you this when we finish today. Not until we finish. <laughs> Alright. But, but it has the map. It has the map. Okay. And we're going to go through the map step by step. And we okay. can punch it in our GPS. Yes. That's <laughs> it. And you have to, not only is this map step by step, but it is precise in detail of what you should do at each step and what you shouldn't do. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is in some parts, you know, like when we're discussing the three layers of the ego, which keeps us all separate, okay? If you basically go at the defenses first, you're going to be in for a hard time. And unfortunately, a lot of people in spirituality and the Course, that's where the first protocol is. They start looking at their denial, they start looking at all of this stuff, and it leaves them in a... a you see, the ego is very powerful in its center. Okay, and there's unbelievable power in there, and his defenses are all like Jesus says in the course, they're foolproof. Okay, but they're not Godproof, and that means that there is a way to do this, a clever way. Okay, so when we go through all of these steps, okay, you'll get a clear idea of where you should start, what should be your state of mind when you're approaching this, because that's very important. There's a chapter in the course is called setting the goal. Anybody know? Setting the goal. Huh? Well. And it is basically whatever you decide to do, if you're in a relationship, you set the goal. If you're deciding to wake up, you set the goal. If you're doing A Course of Miracles, why are you doing A Course of Miracles? Okay? So let's begin. And we're going to step off, or start off at step one. Okay? So, one of the th first things in spirituality that you must do, and it's going to, this is going to save you time if you can follow this guidance, okay? So, as everybody knows at this stage, I teach in the levels, you have one, two, three, okay? Now, at the moment, everybody is at this level, and they're trying to solve the problems at this level. And you just know what Einstein said. What did Einstein say? You cannot resolve a problem at the level at which it was created. Right. Okay. And that's the big problem here. You see, here is the split mind. The split mind is basically attached to the body here. What we do with this mind, we project those thoughts, good thoughts, bad thoughts, thoughts that are right, thoughts that are wrong. We project that onto the world. And then the world does what? Reflects them back at back. us. Exactly. So that's the process involved here. So, if you're trying to solve the problem here, what's the fundamental error that everybody's making at this level? They're coming from the ego. <laughs> well. It's all ego at this level. Well, when we set a goal, that's what we call the good. And what we want to get away from, we call the bad. And we're only reinforcing the split. Do you want to see the biggest calm in the world? Everybody's falling into it. All right, this is how insane it is, and this is how clear the ego is, right? See this part of the mind, the shadow, mm -hmm. okay? It's basically wrong, ego wrong-mindedness as it's in the course, right? Mm -hmm. So here are your two parts to yourself. One part of you is suffering, okay? And the other part is searching for the answers to that suffering. Yeah? He's with me. You all can relate to this. It's the seeking for the suffering that's creating the suffering. It's the seeking of the answers, sorry, that's creating the suffering. So one part of the mind is trying to solve the problem of the other part of the mind, but the, the mind that's trying to solve the problem is the same mind that's creating the problem. Regina? Do you see now just what you said? Here, this mind is trying to solve a problem. Solve this problem. Okay? 
But it's this mind that is the creator of the problem. So you're trying to fix it with the same mind that's, that's creating pretty. the problem. And it's you're trying to fix that's actually creating hell in your mind. It's fixing itself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. For the act of it. Yes. Okay. So this is what Einstein was, whether he was clear about it or not, but this is what he was talking about. Okay, this part of the mind is creating the problems of this part of the mind, and then it's starting out, I'm going to fix it. Now, can everybody relate to that? Yeah? Can you relate to that in your own life? Can you give an example? That's what I'm asking. Can anybody? Somebody who's on the search for enlightenment. What do they do? <laughs> like when you're trying to do the world's forgiveness. Yes. So you're trying to, so you know, your persona is trying to be yeah. a better person, mm -hmm. but then that just creates resentment because you never really forgave the person. So it makes your shadow bigger. Yeah. While you're making your persona trying to be better. Yeah, exactly. What else? Well, I was just wondering, a thought popped in when um, Gloria shared that, that if you're trying to fix it, you're saying it exists. You're stabilizing it mm -hmm. at the same time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that seems to be a problem. It's like... You can look mm -hmm. for you, yeah. You see yeah. this problem. You see here at this level. Okay? This is its entirety here. You know, it's one thought system, this. But the ego splits it into two thought systems. Why? Because it wants to duplicate here, and it wants to think that being in here is really being in here. So this is a mirror of this. Okay? So, what that means is, really, you have a lot of bad thoughts, because what, this is what the ego is, right? It's all thoughts of murder, rape, guilt, fear, all of those, right? So the ego projects that down in here. Then the ego manifests all the good thoughts. And these good thoughts and bad thoughts now go to war with each other. This is the mind that is war with itself, that Jesus is in the Course. And I'm sure there's other spiritualities that basically have this concept in it too. It's called neuroses. The what? That's called neuroses. Neuroses? Neuroses, yeah. When yeah. you're neurotic, you're yeah. in a conflict. Yeah. Or there's another one for it called schizophrenia. That's a complete split. <laughs> well, this is a complete split. Because the one thing about it is, what are we trying to do with the shadow all the time? Suppress it. We're trying to split it. When a relatively healthy person is aware of a lot of their problems, and a person that completely suppresses it is schizophrenic. There's, yes. There's levels of yes, degree. Yes, of course, of course, of course, I agree with you. I mean, some people, you ask them, do you have any problems? Are you perfect? They go, no, I got my issues. Yeah. Another person, they say, I have no problems. Everyone else has a problem. They're usually the ones that So are. what are they doing? Everybody's managing their problems. Nobody's solving the problem. Which brings us back to Einstein. Where do you solve the problem? Huh? Speak up, don't be shy. At a different level. Right, which level? Second. Second level. What? It's, you can only solve the problem from here. All these problems that are down here cannot be solved here. That's the great illusion. And that's where therapy happens. Where? There. Here. Level one. Here. Yeah, you go to another person and they tell you how to fix yeah. Yes. So you can see. So this, that's why therapy doesn't work. Well, if you read the, 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 the psychotherapy in the back of the course, mm -hmm. you know, you'll see why. And you'll see then everybody here, right? What this is really all about now, you must become your own bird. If you're on a journey to wake up, the first thing that you should be really looking at, I have to learn how this works myself. I have to be my own guru. Because when you look in the mirror, the eyes that's looking back in you is the guru. But like we talked about in the last class, the judge steps in front of those eyes. Okay? And this is the judge. Here's the observer. Here's the guru. Here's you. Okay? Here's the secret. 
as long as you're continuing the searching, you're here. And as long as you're giving energy to this, you're giving energy to this. Okay? So you have to come a point where you say, I don't need to learn any anymore. The only thing I need now is basically how to solve the problem. I have to get this out of the way. That's the only thing from now on. Because as long as you are continuing to acquire information, your every bit of information you're taking in, it becomes an idea and eventually it becomes a belief. The whole point of waking up is to empty the cup. Not keep replenishing it, not keep filling it up. Yeah? So. Um, you said the guru would be level three, where you're the observer. Mm -hmm. But then you said the judge that's in front, is that level? Oh, okay, thank you. So, you know, so this is the observer, observer here. Okay, this is the judge, and this is hell. Okay, so when you choose the judge, you're sentencing yourself to hell. I thought you said judge is not number one. Huh? I thought you said judge was in the... Yeah. But you also said judge was number two. But you see, this is the judge that stands in front of the observer. But here's where the action takes place. Do you understand? What's between here and here? The mind. What's true and what's false. So as long as you are looking what's false and believe that it's true, then the ego stands in front of you. So that's the ego stands in front of you when you look at something and make it real, that's false. Now this comes into play because the next step then is the ego projects these thoughts and your mind split. You see, everything in this world is split. And when you make anything real in this world, you split everything because you're splitting your own mind. And as long as your mind is split, you're going to be looking at everything through the eyes of right and wrong or good and bad. Okay? So, enough on that. Let's move along. That was just a recap. We have covered this a number of times in the classes. So let's go step one. tolerant of mind wandering, which means is we'll, 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 a thought will come in and we'll attach ourselves to it and that thought will take us away into the past, will take us away into the future. Past, future. Okay, when you attach yourself to any of these thoughts that actually take you into a memory or take you into, uh, you know, preparing your future, both are the same. So the three options are this in regards to A Course in Miracles. First, the book can be a holy book for you. Second, the book can be a spiritual book for you. And third, the book can be a book of psychology for you. So what does each really mean? Okay? You see, if you're attached to Western Christian symbolism, you're more than likely to basically be doing this book coming from the holiness that's in it, from a religion's aspect. And there are a lot of people coming from religion into A Course in Miracles 
And the symbols of religion are in there because religion has dominated the Western world for two centuries. So people are attached to those thoughts. The reason why it's in there is to let people detach from those thoughts. Okay? The book's a spiritual book. Okay? Because it, it is, has an abundance of spiritual philosophy, insights, and revelations. And this is why nearly every, you know, true spiritual leader in the world is studying the Course. It is, a, you know, it is the holy grail for spiritual people. The revelations that are in it is that it turns all spiritual symbolism actually on its head. I have revealed a lot of this in my book that's just about to be published in the next uh, few days. So, <laughs> I've been saying this for 40 years. <laughs> but we're nearly there. I went for the final proof reading last night. Okay, so, you know, the book, can be, the book then can be a book on psychology. And most, all true psychologists in the world now are studying this book because of the psychology that's in this book. And again, it turns the whole psychology of the world upside down. So, you have three options. Do you want it to be holy? You have to decide. Because if you're going to go this a la carte, all right, you're going to be basically, all right, you're going to be taking a bit of this, and you're going to be taking a bit of this, and you're going to be taking a bit of this. And are you really doing anything seriously? So let me ask, who's doing, anybody? Nancy, you're doing the course. Mm -hmm. Which, have you thought about this? No, I hadn't thought about it, but if I would, off the top of my head, I would say I was going with the spiritual and the psychological. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. There's none of these wrong, by the way. And it would be very, you know, if you have a problem with religion, then I would say to you, basically, you know, you don't have to basically do the religion, but would be, if you're going to do the spiritual or the psychology, would you have to do the religion part of it or the Christian symbols? You have to reinterpret them. Do you know? So if you're doing the psychology or the spiritual part, you still have to reinterpret all the symbols in the course. Bring it all together. You see, these three do meet at level three. There's no difference in these three at level three. But at this level, there's a big difference in these three. And you'll see as we go through this. So, Roy, you, how would you, would you be between the spiritual psychology or would you be psych psychology or spiritual or? Yeah, the combination of those two. Which, if you had to pick one, which would you pick? In terms of the course? Or? In terms of you want to focus on waking it up. I know that psychology at this point. Yeah, good choice. And the reason why I say that's a good choice is because this book is for everybody that thinks. For everyone that thinks? Yeah. Is there anyone who doesn't? <laughs> okay. There is actually. <laughs> there is. Yeah, that is <laughs> Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. and I'm not joking when I say that. No, it's not. You know, because it's 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 our thinking that needs to be corrected. So if you're going down the spiritual path, be very careful that you're just avoiding the thinking path. You can attach yourself to the spiritual specialness. That's the big trap for people. And who are coming at this from the spiritual approach because here is the spiritual specialness, key. Okay? A lot of people in spirituality are coming from spirituality in this room. They're coming from, I've got the truth. No one else has got the truth. Or, I'm in touch with my spiritual self, my essence, no one else is. You know, or I'm different from other people. I have the truth while other people don't have the truth. This is all spiritual specimens. Okay, the true spiritual person is one with everybody. No differences. There's nobody better, there's nobody worse. You left everybody up to the same. Okay, because this is the one mind. Here, you can see this is the opposite down here in hell. Okay, everything's split in two. Where you have separation, you cannot avoid conflict. Simple as that. So, the whole point, Jesus says, 
you can blaspheme God, you can blaspheme the Son, but you cannot blaspheme the Holy Spirit. What did he mean? Anybody take a rock guess? Because the spirit, inner spirit is within us, we're blaspheming ourselves. We blaspheme something external, it's not as... Yeah, but, as but, but God is spirit inside ourselves. We are spirit inside ourselves. Think about it. What is the symbol of the Holy Spirit? God. God. In the course. Um, it's the voice for God. Which is? Anybody? Nancy? What's another word for the Holy Spirit? Oh, all your hair stuff. No? Christ consciousness. Christ. No, I use the way up the levels now completely. Oh. Oh. True right mind. This is why. You can give out about yourself, you can give out about God, but this is the link home. If you, this is the Holy Spirit. It's right minded thinking. Okay, Nancy, here's the higher self. Okay? Your higher self is in here partially. Your personality is also in here partially, right? But here is your complete higher self. So it's the Holy Spirit that takes us up the ladder. So if you're going to not work with the Holy Spirit or right-minded thinking, then you ain't going anywhere. And this is why I come back to, Roy, what you're saying is, you know, for anybody that's thinking, all right, this is a required course. Which means is that thinking has to be corrected. Okay? So to me, the psychology part of the course is the part that we all should look at unless you have a way or a script or a means of just basically going from here to here. And that path would be the dark night of the soul, which would be a total surrender. So if anybody is up to that, that's fine. Then you can... But you're still going to be looking at it from this way. You're going to be still detaching from here, no matter what you do. So, you have three options. Holy book, you have a spiritual book, and you have a book of psychology. So, Sandy? Yes? Where, what, what option have you picked before today? Oh, I haven't before today, because <laughs> I didn't know there were three options <laughs> before today. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think that? Uh, all three? No, one. You just pick one? Yes. Uh, probably psychology. Yeah. Yeah. Which means then you still have to reinterpret and understand the symbols of spirituality, of religion, because the spiritual symbols and the religious symbols are both the same. So to give you an idea, this is the ego right mind, it's the persona, this is the ego wrong mind, it's the shadow. It's also known as the yin and the yang. Okay? Here's the ego, here's the Holy Spirit, also known as wrong mindedness, right mindedness. Yeah? And then you have the higher self, awake, consciousness, so on. There's many symbols for that also. So it's always about don't push a symbol out of the picture because you don't agree with it, because you don't believe it. Anything you believe, you're separating it from you. Is there anything you don't believe, Rob? Um, things that are contrary to facts. Yeah. What is a fact? Something that we demonstrated to be true. Well, what is the truth? For instance, it's not raining outside. I can look and I can verify that it's not raining. Right. Well, a truth is must be made whole. A single truth must be made whole. Do you know what that means? For it to be a fact. But it applies to everybody. Yes. We have to verify it within ourselves. No. It must apply to everybody. Oh, a universal truth. Everybody and everything must be. So if I said, Jody, you are this, it ain't true, unless it, it includes everybody. So a single truth must be made whole for it to be a fact. And I'm talking about content here. I liked your example, but really, that's far. In this world, yes, there's truths. Yes. And the truths are always decided by what's right or what's wrong or what's good or what's bad. So at this level, okay, if I said to you it's written outside, and you looked out now and he says it's not, where would you put me? I put you in the, the, the wrong spot. Yes, wrong of course. Person. And you would be right. 
at this level. At that level. You know, but you see, there's three levels that we're doing here. I know there's three levels here, but there's three types of people also. There's those people who are asleep, there's those who are waking up, and there's those who are awake. So, what is it do you want to be? Because if you want to be awake, all right, then it's complete emptiness that you must attain. If you want to be successful in the world, you can be successful in the world from here. You don't need to discard all your attachments and everything else. Basically, everything that's pissing you off or annoying you is something you, that you need to take care of. But you can still have a job in the world and you can still do all wonderful things in the world, but do it from here. Okay, this is above the battle. It's above this battle. So, again, you don't need to, you know, put yourself under the pressure. I need to wake up because you're going to be coming from this part. Get to here and then you see what you truly want. Here, you don't know what you want. Okay? Regina. Out of those three options, what would you pick? Number three. You go for psychology. No, we can't. You no, no, I'm talking about the three options. Holy book, spiritual book, or psychology. Holy book. You go for a holy book. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? And that's good for you. Because you have attachments there. And that's the right path for you to take at this time. Okay? So anybody that has big attachments to do with the church, to do with guilt, to do with fear and all of that, don't push it out of the way. You're going to have to look at it. Even if you do the psychology, you're still going to have to reinterpret all of that anyway. So you're not going to be able to avoid what you're attached to. Yeah? So that's the first step. 